Hey everybody, it's Chuck Barone, and it is Thursday, June the 29th, 2023. A lot to talk about today, a massive day, a lot of economic news today, a lot of stuff going on. Um, interesting, very, very interesting day. But before we get rolling, of course, let me welcome everybody to the show. We appreciate you guys being here, watching these videos, supporting the show every day. You guys are the reason we keep doing it. We appreciate it. All right, so let's look at these markets today. So we know we got a lot of data today. We knew it was the day we would get GDP numbers, we'd get unemployment numbers, and a lot of extra stuff came with it. Um, numbers surprisingly showing strength in the economy, leading the markets to kind of have a little bit of a weird day because the mood seems to be negative, but the results are not, right? So let's look at this. So the stock market today. The Dow jumps 269 points, a great day for the Dow, 34,122 on the Dow. The S&P up 19 points, 4396 on the S&P. And the NASDAQ basically flat down fractionally, less than one point, 13,591. Markets moving on the, uh, on the data, on the economy, especially the broader market S&P. Uh, NASDAQ, you know, they have their own little weirdnesses with sensitivities to certain things and definitely, you know, this China AI chip thing, NVIDIA, causing a little bit of tumult. I think that's why you had a little negative on the NASDAQ today. Bond yields today, the bond market just tanking today, a bloodbath in the bond market, again another one. We see yields just fly. The 10-year jumps 14 basis points, 3.85%. The two-year also up 14 basis points, 4.86%. We're talking about a 10-year now around 4.5. Um, I mean, these numbers are crazy, guys. The bond market is typically not going to be moving 14 basis points in a day. It just doesn't happen very often. So the idea of seeing this more and more often as we've had and seeing these bond market up one day, down the next, and just gyrating all over the place certainly serves to illustrate the uncertainty we're feeling in this data point to data point driven market we're seeing right these days. But look at this, look at these numbers, okay? So basically today is the halfway point for the year, right? End of the second quarter, tomorrow, uh, the 30th of June. So look at these numbers so far. At this point right now, the NASDAQ is up 30% for the year from January of this year. The S&P is up 14.5% so far this year. And the Dow is the lagger, only up 3%. So, you know what, guys, in spite of all the negativity, in spite of the rate hikes, in spite of inflation, in spite of everything, businesses, corporations, still earning, driving stocks higher. I know it goes contrary to everything we've been thinking here, right? Big negative vibe, everybody feeling like the economy sucks, and uh, companies still earning, employment still rocking, GDP growth. I mean, it's crazy. Okay, so big news. the big news today drives the dollar up also because now the market coming to grips with the fact the Fed will be raising rates throughout the rest of this year. 86% probability now of a rate increase in J July next month. That's up 10% in one week. 30% in one month. It's crazy. Okay, so the dollar up today, 103.33 on the dollar index. Dollar strong still. Metals today mixed, not a very good day for metal, but really a non-event. Gold up 30 cents per ounce, $1,907.70 for an ounce of gold. Silver falling 14 cents, $22.54 for an ounce of silver. Still decent pricing. I'd like to see, the, see these... You know, gold and silver get a little bit of a bounce from these levels, but in the face of a strong dollar, you, 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 it's going to take the dollar to come down a little to see these numbers jump. Oil today, up very small, up 21 cents for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate, settling at $69.77 per barrel, just under that trough number of $70. Between 70 and 75 is where oil seems to be comfortable. So we'll see now if it gets back into that trough and how long it stays there. Bitcoin today up $432, 
30,438 for Bitcoin. Um, interesting news on the crypto sphere today. Looks like Fidelity and several other companies looking to make a Bitcoin ETF. Exchange traded fund, that's going to be fascinating. I guess some of the warnings on volatility that come with this fund are pretty amazing. And then you have Coinbase suing in court today to get the SEC to drop the charges. You've got investors looking at picking over the remains of FTX, considering restarting that exchange. So news happening in the crypto world today. All right, so let's look at news we need today. Today was a very surprising day on the news we got, surprising news on the economy. First came the unemployment numbers. Unemployment claims fall to 239,000 from 265 last week. Easily blown away the $260,000 prediction the experts had. Um, we also got first quarter GDP numbers today. That came in at 2%. Now, that's not exactly a ball of fire as far as economic growth coming, but it's certainly better than the 1.4% growth they predicted. So let's say it like it is here, guys. The economy, in spite of everybody's sour mood, surprisingly doing remarkably well in the face of an incredible 500 basis point series of rate hikes. It's crazy. So you got, if you look at the news on the economy, we've been kind of talking about it here, okay? Now, GDP at 2% is not anything to celebrate. It was 3.2% in the third quarter last year, 2.9% in the fourth quarter last year. Now we're coming in at 2% the first quarter of this year, so you can see the trend is certainly down on GDP growth. But uh, nonetheless, beating numbers, it's coming in higher. And that has just been happening more and more. Now, if you look at the evidence on this economy, okay, um, you have in, in consumer sentiment, the highest it's been since the Fed started rate, rate hikes. You got jobs staying strong, stock markets growing, gaining. You've got inflation numbers, although not where we want them to be, and obviously a little bit fudged, right? But inflation numbers coming down from a peak of 9.1 to 4%. Um, so all of the economic news adding up to a strong economy, guys. I mean, we got to just say it like it, say it like we see it here, right? Now I know, I know. Okay, we have a combination here of in-your-face high inflation. You add in political talk. It's making a lot of people, a huge majority actually, see the economy very negatively right now. Only 31% approve of the economy. Okay. Now, I totally get it. When you go to the grocery store, okay, and every day prices of stuff, milk, butter, eggs, simple stuff, going up pretty much every time you go there, right? And then you're getting constant messaging, radio, television, news, opinion, newspapers, magazines, whatever it is. You're getting constant, constant messaging that the economy sucks. Now, when, you, when that is happening, when you're seeing inflation, you can't buy as much as you used to buy with the same money. You're getting constant messaging from trusted sources that the economy sucks, the economy sucks. Well, it doesn't take anything else to, you know, make you believe it, right? Now, remember, guys, and truthfully, most people are going to believe it because their gut instinct, which most people tend to believe over real evidence, okay, is telling them the economy sucks. Even I, you know, I'm in real estate and mortgage. Let's face it, our business has been probably the most affected by the Fed policy. You know, it feels like the economy kind of sucks to me too, guys. Okay? But when the jury comes in with the kind of evidence we've been seeing, when the numbers are always surprising to the upside, when businesses are still hiring and reporting good earnings, you don't see, you know, uh, you know earnings per share, you don't see that jumping, right? You don't see like, uh, 
how the market measures it by earnings. You know, the, the multiple of the earnings. You don't see that jumping. It's not like we're looking at 30, 50 times earnings like you do in some crazy bull runs. So companies earning, right? A broad-based market, the S&P up almost 15% in half a year. I mean, I guess hard to argue with in-your-face numbers like that. So what do we do about it, right? So, you know, we might have to revise our thinking a little bit on how terrible things are. But the advice we've been giving you guys since we started this show all a year ago, save your money, invest it conservatively, you know, be thoughtful the way you spend, don't take on new debt. You know, if you have debt, try everything you can to pay that debt down, even if it's an extra 10 bucks at a time. These things, bull market, bear market, that's exactly where you need to be. Now in a bull market, maybe we'll loosen up a little bit on the invest your money conservatively and look at some stuff that might be a little more aggressive when the market calls for it. It certainly doesn't right now. So here we have this conundrum where what your eyes see are completely different than what your gut feels. Very, very, very odd combination of things right now. <laughs> and uh, it's just going to be fascinating to see where it all ends up because the change is literally day to day. Fascinating times, guys. So now, huge, huge, huge day coming tomorrow. The PCE index will be released. That's the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. They like this PCE better than CPI or PPI. I don't know why, because they're the ones that set the CPI or PPI, but um, this PCE index now, the reading on it going to be hugely important. So there, last month it came in, 4% top line, 4.7% core. The expectations are 4% top line, 4.7% core. So they're not seeing inflation budging at all from last month's measure. We'll see. You know, these experts, I say so-called experts because, let's face it, man, these guys have just been off target all over the place lately. But uh, this number is going to be huge. If that core number comes in at 47 or higher, it's going to tell the Fed that more pressure rate hikes called for to bring the economy down. If it surprises to the wrong, the other side, where inflation, core inflation actually comes down, we get a 4.5 or a 4.4 or whatever the number is, we get a top line number in the threes, well, I still think the Fed going to bring us two more rate hikes this year, no matter what this says. But uh, if it surprises where inflation is higher, who knows, we could see more than two rate hikes going through the rest of this year. Fascinating times, guys. We're, we're living history here. We really are. This is going to be stuff economists and you know people are going to look at in college courses down the road. We'll see how all of these decisions our geniuses in Washington are making are going to play out. you got so many factors involved in all of this stuff, so many different opinions. It's just going to be incredible to watch how it all progresses and how we come out of this the other side. Anyway, guys, that's it for the day. We'll be back tomorrow with that PCE number. It's going to be huge. Bring you guys the news you need. Uh, as always, we appreciate your support. If you guys could, please hit the like button. It changes the algorithms around. It gets our video in front of more people. We get more views that way. We appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow to bring you guys the news you need. Until then, guys, take care. Thanks.